What's going on guys, Corsi from Gaming Legit bringing you a Battlefield 3 commentary. Today we're going to be focused on tanks uh, from a defensive approach. You know, you could you pretty much can carry over uh, anything I'm going to be talking about today in this commentary into offensive strategy. But for tanks, uh, you definitely need to be a little bit more stagnant in your gameplay. They're not vehicles where you're going to be roaming around, especially in a rush. Uh, Conquest, you're going to be roaming around. You're going to be trying to take, uh, take different points throughout the map constantly re repositioning yourself but in this you're going to be guarding a couple MCOMs and so I see the first mistake that people do is they put themselves instantly into a line of sight onto their tanks and my suggestion for maps like these I don't even know the name of this map because I'm absolutely horrible names I'm completely garbage is to put yourself out of sight and so for a buggy for example while he's going full out around a corner he has absolutely no chance to be able to break and get away from you before uh, he realizes whoa what the hell there's a tank uh, parked himself around the corner and so it's very hard for them to see me outside of the spawn they do catch on to it of course um, but putting yourselves in places like this where you maximize your line of sight but at the same time you put yourself at an advantage point where the first time that they're gonna see you most likely is gonna be when they're uh, driving full out they're not gonna be expecting you to be in that position that you're currently at I'm kinda hidden slightly on my left hand side I'm kinda nestling myself on these rocks uh, a little bit uh, my driving skills aren't the best and so I have a little bit of cover to my left hand side but you guys can get the point. I mean, uh, compare this position to if I drove. You, you see this all the time. There's a hill in the center of your screen to the left. And that's a common place for a ton of foot soldiers to go and uh, stand on top of. Guys snipe you from their spawn that never advance. And they like playing rush to be able to sit back and try to get the longest headshot they could possibly get and rank up the recon class. Um, but, and this is a little bit of preface, a little bit of side. I do a lot of mistakes in this game. This was not a gameplay I intended to record. As you can see, I'm not gaming with any of the people that you typically see in my squad. Um, and I'm not even playing the engineer. And that's going to lead me into the next part of this commentary uh, for strategy for a tank. The, the guys you want to have in a tank, give it to the guys that are engineers, right? Because if you don't give it to the guys of the engineers, it's not like you should expect these guys to be follow following you around everywhere and keeping track of your tank's health. This is not going to happen. And so the most successful tanks in a game are going to be the ones that are full of engineers. Uh, and another hot tip for you, and, and that, that is of course because they can repair the tank, right? Since I'm running the assault class, and I'm so stupid and OCD that... Uh, even though I plan on getting to the tank and giving you as much tank gameplay as I possibly can in this uh, in this recording, there's a guy right there on my screen. Thank you, Corzy, for getting them. Um, I, I just spam the A button because I want to spawn so fast. So I didn't even think about switching over to the engineer because I'm just like go 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 because I find it, it especially if I know I'm going to record a game if I'm recording I'm not going to take the time to take like 30 seconds to switch up my class during the video because I'm just go 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 but I should have switched over to the engineer stupid mistake by me uh, it, it's one of the things that was just like take a breath uh, uh, evaluate the situation see what you need to do change up your class to um, best approach the situation however the game is changing uh, in, in that case I should have been the engineer so that was a mistake on me so give up the tanks to an engineer that's in your squad don't be that douchebag uh, you see this all the time where there's guys in your squad and you're all like running to beat each other out for one vehicle and if you know that somebody has a class catered for that vehicle give it to them don't be selfish like you know be a team player do you want to win because like win loss ratio is really important to me and I, in this game it's very hard just as I guess any other first person shooter but I got 12 teammates and if I'm playing by myself it's very hard for me to determine a win for my team I mean every once in a while I am able to do that I think my win loss ratio is like 1.31 which to me is good because I, I'm not like an MLG gamer I don't get on here and uh, have a group of guys and obsess over win-loss ratio. I do my best to win the game, but a lot of the times it's out of my hands because I'm a one-man army and there's 12 guys. And if I'm playing against decent players, this is Battlefield. You, you can't determine a win solo by yourself. 
It's just not going to happen. It's not in the cards. Here's another mistake by me. I don't know why I got out of the tank. That was absolutely foolish. If I would have stayed in the tank, I could have just as easily killed those foot soldiers and put that vehicle down a lot faster. That vehicle, I don't know what the damn name is because, again, I'm absolutely horrible with names. But that is an awesome transport uh, system. That tank by itself can have so many guys spawn in it. And if you have someone that's smart and patient and willing to give up like 10-15 minutes of the game to appropriately use that vehicle, you can almost assure wins because of that spawn point in that vehicle. And if you have a good gunner in that vehicle, it helps out even uh, even more. But it, it would be a totally boring commentary and totally, as far as the video, the content that you're going to be watching if I did that. Because it's real stagnant, not moving around. Um, gameplay and again it's base cater catered to engineers because that vehicle's got so much life if you're able to repair it fast enough it's an endless spawn point if you do it right um, there's gonna be bullet drop uh, of course in the tank and you have to uh, um, address that um, you, you, you see me screw up a couple times in this and it's just like what are you doing and I think it's actually this coming up or I shoot at this tank several times and I don't get tick marks and I keep on shooting. I don't fix my reticle. I don't move it up. I don't try to account for bullet drop. I just keep on trying to shoot at the same exact spot over and over and over. And it's just a stupid, stupid mistake. I'm watching this and I was like, dude, why am I even posting this? But if anything else, it helps you guys to figure out. <laughs> don't do this. Like, you know, address it. And, and look at that. I got a hit marker as soon as I adjusted my reticle on the screen. That's what you should be doing. And as soon as I hit him too, he starts moving around. A big mistake. Another hot tip, a lot of people know this, but then there's a huge portion of you that do not know this. And I know this because there's a lot of no's. I know, right? Uh, some of my friends that were way high uh, ranked, you know, vastly more than what I was, didn't even know this hot tip. But you can actually control where you get out of the vehicles from. Um, and, and it's really easy. All you have to do is press the left or right on the, um, your left analog stick and hold B. And you'll actually get out the vehicle based on what direction your um, left anal analog stick is uh, pointing to. So that brings up a strategy all on its own. Uh, so typically when you get into a tank versus tank uh, uh, confrontation in any, you know, rush, conquest, whatever it is, you want to line your tank up center to center. Um, you Because there's less space for them to hit you versus if you pulled up sideways, you literally double the hit area on your tank. Um, and you have more armor in the front of your tank as well versus if someone's shooting at you from the tail of your tank. That's another hot tip if you did not know that. However, if you are running as an engineer, you can take the additional risk of parking your tank sideways with doubled with the fact that you know that you can control which way you eject out of your tank. Because a lot of times you see engineers um, horribly eject out of their tanks and you're able to kill them while they're trying while they're repairing their tank because they're doing it completely wrong they like try to get to the back of the tank but even the concussion damage from the shells from the tank can kill an engineer repairing the back of a tank if you can't even see him it's just the blast radius of the uh, radius of the shells and so the strategy I would like to advise is actually park your tank sideways. You're making yourself more vulnerable without a doubt. You're going to take a lot more damage from people shooting the side of your tank. But if you're an engineer and you have a buddy in your tank, which is also an engineer, you can actually dictate which part of the tank you get out. And you can get out completely in cover. You basically, your tank is your wall of protection. And you can sit there and repair your tank and be able to get back in the tank. You're increasing the longevity and lifespan of the tank. And uh, you, chances are you're just going to completely destroy people. And so that's a hot tip that's probably going to carry over pretty well. And finally, you see my dumb ass uh, switch over to an engineer. And I get a couple ticks with the RPG. Actually, no, I get one. And I get an kill assist, which is actually brilliant. There's, there's several times where I don't kill a guy, but it's almost better that I didn't kill him because I get a suppression assist, and then I get the assist. And those assist points actually add up more than what it would what have what I would have gotten from that one kill. So that's really cool about this game. I don't know why other people don't do it. Call of Duty drives me absolutely insane because by default you get 20 assist points which is absolutely dumb. Even if you like destroy a guy, 20 assist points. This game, if I destroy a guy, I'll get 97 assist points based on how much health I took away from that guy which is really 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 cool. So I got MVP again. I've actually gotten MVP which is 
Uh, first place person as far as score goes uh, across all 24 players in the game. And I've actually got the 50 times that you get that in the limited amount of time I've played this game. So I got a special medal for that, which is pretty cool. Um, that makes me feel good. And that and that's something that's so cool about this game. This game's absolutely amazing. And we have a new DLC of sorts coming out. We get four new maps, I believe, new vehicles, new weapons, and it's for free. And Battle Blog, by the way, if you haven't checked out Battle Blog, it's super cool. And I think Insane Acorn actually started uh, a new crew on Battle Blog. I forget what it's called. Um, for gaming legit so look that up as well as always guys check out the facebook facebook.com forward slash gaming legit it's kind of like my hub where i post a bunch of different uh information that i find on the interweb um about gaming and then you guys comment and I'll, of course i give you guys updates on what gaming legit's doing it's an awesome community on there subscribe like favorite all that stuff whatever you can to help out gaming legit and i'll see you guys soon